<laughs> yes, happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers! Kudos to you who pressed beyond the couch and the pillow and the sheets and the mattress. You got your kids halfway fed and you got yourself decent. Happy Mother's Day for your press today. I am Pastor Adrian Lindsay, and I am holding court in honor of my husband today. Um, I am honored to be here. I'm home. This is home. I feel like I'm just talking a little bit longer today. Um, but I want to honor you mothers today. Thank you so much for that wonderful opening. Um, I love that sermon title video because Mother's Day is different for all of us today. No mother is alike and I want to honor that. So I want to give about 10 seconds to those who sit in a very interesting position before we begin. And my position is my mother passed in 2020. So Mother's Day is different for me. I am a mom, but I just want to take about 10 minutes. Jeff is going to play. And those of you who have lost your mothers or those of you who are grieving the absence for any reason that your mother's not in your life currently today, I want you to take this moment and thank God for, for the moment that you're here. First of all, that you're born. And, but I want you to grieve this moment and say, God, I thank you that I'm here. Thank you for my mother, no matter what your mother has done and whether or not she's here anymore. So Jeff, give us 10 seconds. It's gonna take a moment of silence. Thank you, Jeff, I appreciate it. Oh my goodness, good morning, good morning, Believe LA. Give yourselves a hand. I am so glad to be here. You guys pray with me. I am, you know, Aaron Lindsay, his Timberlands is kinda big. He be holding stage, holding court for 15, 20 weeks, preaching up here, and I was like, oh babe. And then the thing sat on me that I had to sit in your, you're awake, and um, I honor you today. You guys, give it up for Pastor Aaron Lindsay, the pastor of this house, my husband, my baby daddy. I love saying that because, you know, he's, he's kind of a big deal, um, to me at least, but uh, it feels good that the world recognizes it as well. Um, I wanna say, uh, I'm a mom, and I have a, a den that I like to call my den. Um, my family, I have a, I'm a mother of three, and um, I wanted more, and my husband's like, heck no. <laughs> so that was for his 50th birthday uh, party last year, swore away at the house that we threw, because my husband is a party animal. And, uh, but my kids, this was the photo they all approved. I just want to say that. When you have adult kids who have their own personal social medias, you just don't get to post. You're like, mom, mom, what you doing? Don't tag me in that. And oh, that's not a good photo. This was a photo we were allowed to post. I'll, I'll make sure I can get this mic right. That was, we were allowed to post it. So I was like, I'm just using that photo because planning a family photo was like stressful for our, for our house. So that is my den. That is my husband, Aaron, of course, myself. And I have Kennedy, my firstborn, who made me a mother. She's amazing. <laughs> She is a, a complete enigma. I love her. Uh, we have Aaron Wells the second over to my left here, and uh, Blake Lindsay, my surprise. He's 15 years old, and I'm still shocked that I have three kids. Um, he was my package from a trip. Amen. So I just decided to keep feeding him, and I let him call me mom. <laughs> he is one of, uh, he's the, the, I think the glue that we didn't know we needed. You know, just the surprise babies, I get it, I get it. I was a surprise baby too. But we bring a certain magic. And um, my family is, that's my den. And I say den because I will pounce on you if you try me. <laughs> About that one right there. And next I have my mom. I honor her today. If it wasn't for my mother, I would not be here. Wanda, thank you. That's my mother. She transitioned in 2020. Um, without my permission, uh, but in God's purpose, 
Uh, that's the year I learned the sovereignty of God. And those of you who don't understand sovereignty, my prayer is that you hear about it before you experience it because it causes an interesting dynamic inside your soul. You'll be mad at God for something that you actually don't get a right to speak about. And that's a painful place. But as a Christian, we chose the faith of sacrifice. So I'm not saying my mother was my sacrifice. I'm saying there are things that we have to give up a right to. Sacrifice your right to stuff. And the quicker you get into that, the better you'll be. You'll be like, God, you got me. You can get me through this. You can get me through all things. But Wanda, she raised four kids. She had a surprise set of twins. And I was number two of the set. And then I had two baby brothers after that. So my mother was 19 with three kids, all within three years of each other. She had an on-demand wedding. <laughs> she had an on-demand wedding at the age of 16 to be divorced before she was 25 by my father who got off the highway very early. So she raised me and my siblings in the projects on $266 a month. She made it stretch. But one of the things she told us was, you might live in the projects, but the projects don't live in you. So um, she always spoke vision, always spoke up. Another mother I would like to honor today in that same space is my mother-in-law, Diana Lindsay. We don't have a photo of her, but she deserves the highest honorable mention. I'm only saying that because one day you guys will have photos in our building that we will probably build from the ground up. But there will be pictures of these mother and these women, these women because without them, we wouldn't be here. Without the sacrifice of our mothers, Pastor Aaron and I would not exist. And we would not have given God our yes, that we were trying so hard not to give God. But he said, no, this is my will. This is my purpose. Believe LA. And so here we are. So, all right. I was raised by a great mama. That's good. So I just want to say we are going to honor everybody in this moment. I hope you find yourself in this message. I'm telling on myself, not too much. But I want to make sure every mom understands that I feel you, sis. We get you, and we are going to bond together. We're going to be better after this, but I want to bring a little brevity to the message today. So I'm going to tell on myself just a little bit. So to our next slide, what kind of mom do you have? I grew up watching TV in the 80s, and I have my pick. So these are the moms that made the most impact on me. And I don't know if any of you guys know these faces. Some of you may not in this um, TikTok generation. Um, these are real people who were real to me, although they were on TV. It's okay. It's all right. Um, the first one we have is June Cleaver. June Cleaver was your classic gentle parenting mom. And I think she worked at home. I think she's a stay at home mom. And what's interesting about her is that Beaver had a lot of autonomy. He could come and go as he pleased. And I was like, oh my God. And then all their life issues were solved in 30 minutes. It was like, that's life, right? She's a good mom. Then we have Florida Evans. Anybody know Florida Evans? Good times? Listen, that was my show because I was in a projects. So, but I loved her because she could see her meter was so sensitive. She knew, excuse me, she knew when foolishness was coming down the pipe. She knew when it was coming. It was just her look. It was like, Really? Uh-huh. It was this thing that she had about her. And I was like, and to be named Florida, where gators are native. She, her name says, don't mess with me. I'm just like, I'm, I'm, she's not here for it. And my favorite, favorite mom of all, because I think she held such a beautiful space of both elegant and maternal and also boss. And that is Claire Huxtable, the character, amen, on <laughs> The Cosby Show. <laughs> Because we had some clarity last week. We had to clean up some clarity last week. But Claire Huxable was, she was what I like to call a street lights mom. Don't be, get, make sure you get home before the street lights come on. Amen. So we're going to go to this TikTok challenge. Y'all know I'm not, I'm an AOL generation girl. That's who I am. But I got a couple of tests for y'all. Can anybody tell me, what, let's go to the next slide, Vinny. What, what does that mean? What, that, there's a challenge going around there. Abbreviations means a phrase. Now think mothering. Moms, this is our test. Don't you, ever try. Don't you ever or even try it. 
Okay, so you guys got the key. Okay, next slide, Vinny. Let me see how good you are. What? Ah, you gotta sit your butt down with the claps and all that. Right? What? what? It, was, it was so fast, even the dads know it. Even the dads know it. If you're a parent of a child who has a zigzag spirit, what did I just say? You better sit your butt. All of this is one sentence for one child. Okay, so the next one. I just said it. You better be home before the street lights come on. Okay, and the last one. This one is almost hieroglyphical. It's more of a June Cleaver statement. Come on, yes! Thank you. <laughs> Listen, I, as a mom, and I was raised by an old school mama, I'm gonna say that old school mama, um, who might throw, off, throw her chanclas at you. So, um, <laughs> so let me tell you. Listen, that last one was a real one for me as well, learning how to speak. But today, I, I, I was studying this week, and Pastor Aaron has been such a wonderful coach because he knows this place very well. But I love the hearts and the families of Believe LA. And one of the things I wanted to know was, for Mother's Day, what is mothering? What is it? Like, I mean, we've got descriptions, we've got size for we've got all these things that we say about it, how we feel about it. And I'll just, instead of going to Merriam-Webster or even going to and you have a dictionary, I just ask myself, self, who's a mother, <laughs> what is it? And I came up with this. Now, it ain't smart, but it's true. Yeah. It's a full-time stinking job. Yeah, it it's like a Mary J. Blige song. It's 25-8 in these having kids streets. Yeah. There are days that you take off, but it's more or less your time away because you're always thinking about what's next. You have a constant running grocery list or a constant running need list. You walk in through, you're like, oh my God, I need new this. Oh my, the curtains, I gotta wash those. Oh, the laundry, I gotta take the laundry. It is a constant running, it's a motor underneath. Yeah. It's just running and running and running. Mothering, once you turn it on, once you click the button, once you click accept, I agree to the terms and conditions of this agreement, <laughs> it never stops. Even after your kids are gone out your house, you somewhere running underneath the surface about other people's kids. Because <laughs> you can't turn it off. So mothers for me are the first version of protect, love, and serve. We protect our kids, we love them well, and we're gonna serve them. We're gonna give them what they need as much as we possibly can that's within us, and that's how we do it. Now mothers do have this really amazing gift that came from God called intuition. And sometimes I wish I could, I wish it was a fader on it. I can turn it down. I can't turn down the intuition because you know what you know when you know it. The thing is you have to practice your poker face when you know what you know. And so I have had to learn that really important process of poker face when I have deep intuition. So we're gonna get into the word today, but before we do, I'm gonna pray. Father, we thank you for this moment, bring us Breath, life, love, remind us how amazing the women you created in this earth and on this planet to be mothers, what it means. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's go to Proverbs 31, verse 26 through 31. And I know Proverbs 31 is, it gets a bad rap. Like, it's usually used as like a punishment source or, oh, this is what you, you ain't there yet until you have 31 locked down. And I had a couple of different pastors say, this thing was written by a mother-in-law, so you shouldn't listen to it. And I thought that was funny because it was written by a king's mother. She was talking to her son, Lemuel. Listen, who can find a woman? Who can find a good one? Like, you know, like basically saying she doesn't exist, but you're talking about king, the king who had all these concubines. She was like, your search is futile. You're looking for something that doesn't exist. And so you'll try to Frankenstein something that only God can give. Yeah. So Proverbs 31, I want you not to carry any guilt or condemnation about it. It's literally just an, it's an instructional book on chart, charting yourself. Where are we going? Where am I? Where, you know, it's just run it up against your life 
And don't use it as a condemnation, but use it as an encouragement. Yeah. And it's a goal, right? So verse 26 says, when she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Her children stand, I say rise, and bless her. Her husband praises her. Now this is what he says. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. That was in his eyes, but he was also acknowledging everyone else who was fantastic. Charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for all she has done and let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the ways we mother. And there's a million things that I could put up here, but I decided to hone it down to three because we don't have all day. We got chicken to eat. <laughs> so number one is we mother with our voice. Say it with me. There's nothing like a mother's voice. One more time. Amen. I wanted you to say that because I want you to remember that. We all came from a mother. And if she's still alive, just listen. Just let her talk, let her rant, do the thing that she's gonna do. Hey, okay, mom, all right, all right. But let her talk to you. Proverbs 31, 26 says, when she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instructions with kindness. A wise and caring tone makes all the difference in a child's world. And I'm gonna say in your family's world. But I'm gonna tell y'all this. This is a test that I flunked early on. I didn't know tone was a thing. Did y'all know tone is a thing? I'm sorry, I'm telling myself again. I did not know tone was a thing. I used to just say what I needed to say. I didn't care how you felt about it. It was information I was passing along and I needed things done. <laughs> that was like, I was like, what, what, what do you mean? And, but I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn as a wife. Oh, it's your tone. Oh, my kids, sad eyes. I had really uncomfortable conversations about me trying to say things differently. And then I had to realize, my husband used to say, I'd say, tell me when I do it. Give me an example. And one day he was like, very carefully, this is one of those moments. And I heard what I said, because I hadn't been outside myself hearing what I was saying. And I immediately apologized and realized that tone actually has a thing on it as well. He used to say, it's not what you say, it's your tone. And I love that because it was always a body check for me to remember that it is not just about what, I'm, what information, um, information I'm trying to convey, but it's really about how I'm saying it. He said, anybody will love a nice dinner as long as it's not served on the top of a garbage can. Like, see me better. And I didn't realize that I, I wasn't conscious. It wasn't anything I was doing purposefully. It was something I was doing out of rote because I come from a particular background where my mom had four kids within three years. She had teenagers in the house at the same time, all four teenagers. So she was like a sergeant to me. She was a warden. So everything was like, go, here, stop, no. It was always choppy. So I had to learn how to smooth it out, had to drip it out. So that's, that was one of really a powerful lesson that I learned. Honesty has a tone, just like a lie. Trust has a tone, just like mistrust. You go, man, I don't know, it's just something about them. Yeah. That's tone. It's not what you say, it's your tone. Love has a tone, so does disregard. Somebody can say something to you, it's over there. Excuse me? Or you can say, oh, babe, I saw it. I think it's over there, right? I used to teach a wives class for two and a half years at our previous church, and I used to tell the wives, your fairy voice. And they're like, what is that? And I'm like, you can say the same thing in a fairy voice, and it's okay. I promise. Try it. Instead of saying, pick up your clothes off the floor, you can say, wow, you should pick up your clothes off the floor. I don't know. <laughs> Are these yours? Oh, I keep tripping over them. I don't know why. <laughs> there is so much we can get done if we change our tone, right? You can like, I mean, I'm telling we've gone into wars over tone, y'all. Don't play. This tone is everything. And when women master tone, we can turn the world a whole lot different. That's a lesson. 
Whenever your tone is off in any of your relationships, whether you're your mother to child or a husband to wife or a sister to brother, the relationship is off. The tone is an indicator of the temperature. So pay attention to how you are living and speaking and the weight and the heart from which you say things. Because it's by the spirit that we know the spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 A mother's voice is unmistakable. Any Apple product users in here? Apple, Apple, Apple? Oh, don't you do it. I'm so sorry, Android, I'm so sorry. My husband, they be going hard on them green bubbles. I'm so sorry, but we are an Apple house. But what's crazy about Apple is that Siri is installed and she listens to me when I say, hey Siri. If I say it loud enough, some of you guys' phones might light up. But in our house, if Kennedy says, hey Siri, my phone is gonna light up. And I'm like, oh, well, she all in my business. Like, how do you, but I think it's just because Siri has been collecting voice data of, of all the people around me. And so, but unlike Siri, Siri can't read my tone. She don't know when I'm sad. But nowadays, if Siri says something, I might try to check her, she'll check me back. I said, wait a minute, who coded tone inside your CPU? I don't like that. That's not an automatic download, that's an upgrade. You don't get that. But mothers recognize tone. You ever call your mother and you're a little off? Hey, mom, what's going on? What's going on with you? You okay? How's everything going? I'm good. Mm, you sure about that? Yeah. That's mothers picking up the invisible vibrations of I know you. I know you. And this is not you. So when I hear that from my kids, I lean in. Hey, because you know, in this generation, it's a very different world. You know, you have to be invited in. <laughs> if they don't send you an invitation, you either have to bust down the door, because I believe in that. <laughs> I believe in taking doors off hinges, amen. <laughs> and your rent is, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I missed it this month, I missed it this month. You didn't pay your rent. You can say anything in a fairy voice. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed your rent, oh yeah. But I know when my kids are missing something in the moment, so I try to lean in and go, is this a moment for mentoring? Is this a moment for listening? So I just pick accordingly. You may be calling your mom and your world is like ablaze. Is you moving and going and showing and bossing, but she can hear when you are not well. And when she does that, can we just like from now on, just stop resisting that? That is God saying, hey, hey, I see you. You need something. Here's a little vitamin shot. Here's a little, here's a little love. Here's a little integrity. Here's a little honesty. Here's a little chin up. So mothers paying attention to their kids' tone is just as powerful as us listening to them. Point number two, we mother with our look. We mother with our look. Say with me, she keeps a close eye. Verse 27 says she's carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. So I don't know if y'all know this, but moms read minds. Do. My mom used to read my mind. I should think flowers, 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 flowers. And she'd be like, I know you over there thinking something. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. But I'd be like, flowers, wallpaper, flowers, generic stuff. Because I, I really believed that she could read my mind. But it wasn't that she could read my mind. It's that she could read me because she was me. I had to own the, she had to own the DNA that I now own myself and my kids. I know me, myself the best. So when I see movements and energy in my children, I'm going, hey, because I remember. Don't forget now, you was a whole mess before you had chi kids, children, and now you acting like you don't, I don't know what's going on with Johnny. Yes, you do, you was a mess. <laughs> you was a whole problem for the teacher. <laughs> don't act like you don't remember. <laughs> But I tell my kids, I got your cheat codes, dudes. I got your cheat codes, do that. I got your cheat codes. I was like, we cannot be nerfed, big fella. Up, up, down, down, right, right, left, X, Y, A plus, was it a start? <laughs> She's like, yeah. So listen, I, the cheat codes is how we live. As parents, you're always looking for the signs that tell you what the tea leaves are saying to you. And our kids are always talking. They think they are good secret keepers, but they're not, they suck. They're telling on themselves all the time. So the look, have a closeful eye. Now, 
I felt really good after I read this scripture in Psalms 121, verse five through eight. It said, the Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands behind you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go both now and forever. Now listen here, a little bit of telling on myself. I was the most amazing helicopter parent ever. I could hover like nobody's business. I remember when Kennedy was born, I did not want to bring her to church because people have germs. And, and she was young, she was like I'm about four months or so. And I told a friend, I was like, Rich, don't let nobody breathe on her. Like nobody can pick her up. I walked away from my daughter thinking she was safe with a six foot eight basketball player. And this other mother came over and swooped Kennedy out of the car seat. And I'm at the front of the church She's at the back of the church. What do you think she did? She was clapping and if you don't put her down, right? Now, I went off on this mother because she picked up my baby without my permission. I was a helicopter parent. She was six months. Kennedy had teeth and Timberlands. And I was like, she's new. She's too new. She's new. I was trying to keep people away from her the whole time because I wasn't ready to share her with the world. I was afraid. So I was like, only, I'm the only one who knows what she needs. Wow. And then I isolated myself from help. Wow. And I almost lost it. Yeah. Yeah. You know the saying, it takes a village. Yes. It takes all of us to raise one child. Yes. Yes. It's the influence, it's the good, it's the bad, it's the examples. So Sometimes it's the uncles you go like, uh-uh, stay away from him. Right. <laughs> or the aunties, stay away from her. Yeah. She'll mean you no good. So helicoptering, this scripture was my kind of jam. <laughs> Imagine a mom trying to shade her kids from the sun. Remember Helen from Incredibles? And she could stretch, boom, 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 right? You talking about being tired, trying to shade all your kids all the time? That's a lot, it's like, Lord, keep them. Yeah. After baby number two, when I realized I had no help because I isolated myself, by the time little Aaron came, I was putting him in people's arms when he was two weeks. Hey, here you go, here you go. Yeah, you want to hold him? Sure. Yeah, there you go. Yes, you can kiss him. Fine. Yeah, it's great. Because I, just, I refuse to do it alone anymore. I was like, and my husband traveled, beautiful man, gave me all the accoutrement that I needed to raise his kids well and strong, but I was still suffering because I had a way. I wasn't looking and paying attention to me, first of all, what I needed, and then also who was around me, who was a safe community. So mothers will mother with their eyes. Mama's a deep well and how and deep well on how to live your life well. But if you listen well, all will be well. Everything about our mothers from the way they voice what they say and now to the way they look. It's a it's a package. It's forming. Do you see it? It's a whole kit. It's a download. So if you listen to your mother, your life will be well. My final point, bring it to a close. We mother with our touch. Say there's nothing like a mother's touch. The hands, the voice, a look, those are all ways that we touch as mothers. Those are all the ways that you feel touched and seen by your mother. Her touch is so important that you crave it when it's gone. You crave it when she lives far. You crave it when she's traveling and living her best life because these moms be in these streets. <laughs> You're like, can you just be a regular grandma? <laughs> like that ship has sailed, honey, since TikTok and social media has lit up Facebook. Like Facebook is like for the great grandmas. <laughs> These new grandmas got passports. <laughs> they are kicking it. <laughs> yes. Proverbs 30, 30, 31, 31 says, reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Why do I lightweight love the word reward? I kind of kept reading that over and over. I was like, God, I like gifts. I like presents. Reward me. And then it was like, no, that's not the reward we're talking about. We're talking about your life, your decisions, your choices, how you raise your kids. Those are your receipts. God is a God of investment. He, know, he wants a return on what he has given you. If children are his inheritance and they're a blessing from him, you don't think he's going to watch over that? Psalms just said it. He's going to watch over all his kids, including the ones he gave you. And when you mishandle those children, there comes un uncomfortability, 
chastising moments, jarring life decisions that you cannot really prepare yourself for because maybe we're not seeing our kids well. A mother's touch is life-saving. It's from that gentle reassuring, hey, how you doing? Or it's gonna be all right. Or the snatch of life. Sometimes we can snatch the life in and out of our kids, depending on what is happening. We will make a choice to use our hands and our bodies to protect and save their life. Yeah. Anybody remember the mom seat belt? I'm a girl from the 70s, so I'm kind of, you know, she's vintage, I'm gonna say that. Um, <laughs> remember the mom seat belt? The mom seat belt was what, anybody know what it is? Uh-huh, yup, this. That is the mom seat belt. One day I was driving my king in our chariot and I was going a little fast and traffic got sticky and I needed to stop. And I stopped quickly and I threw my hand up on my husband. He looked at me like I had three heads, y'all. He was like, ma'am, what is that? Like, what are you doing? Like, and he was at the time called Big Lens at the time. And we just busted out laughing. He was like, what is that gonna do that a slowdown ain't gonna help you, ma'am? If you slow down, you won't need to pretend to be my seatbelt. And I was like, I, we just cracked up laughing because I thought that was so funny that I had like an epigenetic moment where my mom used to do that. She used to throw her hand out and I did it to my husband. I lightweight touched his knee the other day we were driving. He said, what, what is that? What, what, are, what are you doing? <laughs> what, what are, I, I kind of put my hand on, I've gone down. To, I'm, I'm gonna protect you, I'm gonna protect your knee as I drive <laughs> against the traffic. Um, but it was in that moment I thought it was really funny, but it was my hands, I was using my hands to protect. And that's what mother's hands are supposed to be. Now, God's kingdom is honor. It is the flow of the kingdom, it's how it works, it's what moves the kingdom, it's what moves you in and out of places of authority and greatness and at tables of power and influence. Because if you don't have honor, you don't have life. You don't know God. When you rock with the dishonor code, you can literally plan on not having God live and sit with you. Let's go to Deuteronomy, Old Testament. Chapter five, verse 16. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God commanded you. Then you will live a long life. Live a full life in the land of the Lord your God is giving you. This commandment is the one commandment that has a promise attached to it. Yeah. Everything else is a don't do and a bet not. You bet not. <laughs> this here is like the spine of a book. Yeah. It literally holds the spiritual side of the commandments and then the life. We do life together human to human commandments that follow after that. But he hinges so much on this one here that it literally becomes the gateway. And if the hinge is rusty, there's gonna be some spiritual parts you're gonna miss. There's gonna be some physical parts, human to human interaction pieces you're gonna miss altogether. Honoring your parents literally becomes, we could say the apex or the V cut to whatever you're trying to do. It's at the base. It's really the core of how you are wired. So you think I'm here, I'm whatever, my mom, whatever. No, let's see honoring our parents differently from today on, because it literally blesses your household or it disrupts your world. Yeah. Right. If you can see your position as a child, no matter if you're 90 or if you're nine, honor your mother and father, because with it is attached blessings, a long life. Man, God is serious. It's in the tent. I feel like touch is one of the most important because it can be either helpful or destructive. You can use your words to cut your children down, but there's something very different about heavy, angry hands. I'm not gonna linger there, but I wanna talk about it. We miss it. Sometimes we can be tired. Sometimes we can go a little long, a little loud, a little harder. And this is where grace and forgiveness has to sit in your heart as a parent, as a mom. First of all, you've been forgiven by Jesus. Second of all, you should always be willing to ask for forgiveness with your kids when you walk in humanity. When you are short and you are sleepy and you are crabby and you're teed off and you try to mother or parent out of that shortness, you're gonna cause damage. And God is asking for us to be aware of our presence, aware of our words, aware of our touch. 
ask for time. Hey, I need a minute. I used to tell my kids, hey, um, when, I was not, when I was working on my tone, I needed time to go practice the tone because you have to be in a mindset because it's coming from here. Yeah. Your tone and your touch, it's coming from your soul. And from spirit to spirit, we raise our kids and heart to heart, we raise our families. We're going, what is it about this space that is a challenge for me? And being keenly aware of the physical presence that God has blessed you with, you have to move carefully and in honesty. Yeah. Vulnerability kicks the door open for trust, yeah. even with your kids. Yeah. I'm a little crabby today, y'all, it ain't you. I'm just tired, I'm sleepy, I'm hungry. Some of y'all turn into little beasts when you don't have food, so you need snacks in your pocket. <laughs> That's why moms have snacks in their big bags. <laughs> because we meet grown kids who don't know how to eat on time. <laughs> so you may be tired all the time, but I'm gonna ask you to revive yourself. Here are my final thoughts to live by. One, receive the grace of God for yourself. It's the unmerited favor. It is Jesus came so we can have access, right? He came so we didn't have to go do the slaying of the animals and having a bloody altar and raise it for a year and it had to be perfect. He was the perfect, full, complete sacrifice for you to have access to go to God and go, God, these kids, I don't know what to do. I got thrown a boomerang today and I did, I thought everything right, but I'm in a moment where I'm sitting in a bag that I didn't plan on. I come to the altar and I put them there, yeah. which is why I was blessed today to see all those kids. Once you, give, you get your kids from the Lord, which he's watching over them according to Psalms, you give them back every yeah. day. Yeah. Every day, your child should be on the altar that you create. God today as they go to school. God today as they go to play date. God today as they go here, as we go to the grocery store, protect us, cover us, keep us. We're not playing the Job game. I'm not ever living in fear again. Yeah. I serve the God of might and power and deliverance. And at the end of this story, I know where we all go. So in my strength and my clear decision, I've chosen to serve Jesus Christ and everything about that includes my home. So I'm not gonna worry about my kids. Yes, I got concern. And sometimes if, if the concern gets a little too loud, I know I haven't been resting in his grace and his power to take care of my family because he's taking care of me. What am I going to do? I'm running around in his hand thinking, God, I got it. God, I got it. He's like, girl, I got you. Right. Number two, be empathetic. Try to remember, be clear, be caring. Remember you, that's you in there. That's your DNA. Yes. Try to be caring. And then this time, little bump on it, do what would be helpful for your child for the length of their days. Yeah. Where maybe you were wilding out and you didn't have the coaching that you now see, because hindsight is 2020, you know. Be that. Yeah. Be the 2020 for your kids. Yeah. Give them that clear vision now. Say, you know, I did that and it didn't work, but this is, ooh, this is what I wish somebody would have told me. And you can say anything in the right tone, right? You can deliver bad medicine if it tastes good. And sometimes our kids need to be challenged and called up. Three, get rested. Get the rest you need. Weary leaders cannot make critical decisions. I was going over my notes and I said, oh, sleepy moms can't make nice, you know, nice uh, moments either. Get your sleep, go to bed. My husband said something the other day. He was like, I love being grown. He said, because I get to go to bed anytime I want to. <laughs> he said, it's so grown to go to sleep at 8.30. Like, that's a grown move. Like, you know how a boss that is? Like, I'm getting in the bed. It's 7 o'clock. What am I up for? Like, I'm going to just go to sleep. And I thought that was so boss. Like, I was like, I'll be right there. <laughs> friends don't let friends have fun alone. Listen, <laughs> number four is remember when. More back to the empathetic, please. But remember when it was you. And remember when maybe it wasn't this good. Maybe you, as a family, you guys grown from one place to another and everybody's aware of the blessing. Or everybody's aware of uh, even sometimes the demotion. You could have had wealth and now you're living in a place of humility. What is the story you want to tell your kids about the movement, the back and forth? If we elevate high things all the time, our kids will never get the point that life is this is this. Yeah. 
we up, we down, we up, we down, we up, we down. Because if you sell the lie that we're always high, you create anxiety when it's low. And if we wonder why our children are full of anxieties because no one's ever prepared them for the changes of life. So tell your story. Today we up. Everybody eating steak or tofu. And like this week, hey, let's do some breakfast at home for dinner. This week, let's do homemade pizzas. Not because we have an artisan oven, but because the goal is to feed you and to feed you well. And it's about the family table. Amen? Amen. Peace out, So there are some things, this here, the mother's look, touch and voice, same thing with God. God's voice, God's look, God's touch. That's how he loves us. He loves us through through our mothers. He's loving my kids through me. And I wanna be the right trusted resource for his healing and his grace and his power ups for my kids. I don't plan to be perfect, I just wanna be honest. I want to be trustworthy. I want to have integrity. I want to move with honor. I want my kids to see me making moves that actually count for their wealth and their legacy because God is invested in the family. Last y'all checked, he said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So it's about the whole family. It's not just one. It's not just me. It's not just us. And a lot of times I'm going to say this, trauma will try to take the stage. I need for you to not let trauma and trouble to override the importance of having a whole family. You can live beyond it, you can live through it, but it all depends on your choice about honor and sticking to stay. Amen. Amen. I don't know why, who that was for. Don't let trauma take the show. My last scripture is Psalms 139 verse 13. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. So fitting for Mother's Day. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. That is me acknowledging me. Adrienne has to acknowledge that Adrienne, even with her trips and faults, that she may see in her kids, that I may not like about myself, but God has got, he got jokes. He will make you love the things about yourself and your kids. Cause he's going, I need you to heal that inner girl so that I get the glory because you can't love what's in Kennedy that you see that's in you. If you don't get this right. And so I had to learn how to heal my body, heal my mind, heal my eyes. So I can love my daughter honestly and authentically in her space and my sons, they got me too. So I had to be honest with myself and say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made with all of the scratches and the bumps and the bruises that we now call tattoos, (laughs) amen. (laughs) My last point is hands. Everybody look at your hands. Look at your hands, yep, hands. You guys remember your mother's hands? Yes, if your mother's with you, look at them. Take a look at your mom's hands real quick. The wrinkles the pedicure, the manicure. You know, maybe she don't wear polish because she's a real cook. (laughs) I don't know. But we don't know how many hours of labor to make you who you are. How many years of toiling and twisting, opening jars, splashes from cooking, all the tears she wiped from your face. God knows every tear that went inside her skin to make you happy. All the tears that she wiped away that went inside her own DNA and said, I know those tears oh so well and the ones that God bottled in heaven. Now, for all the mothers who are here and the ones you don't have, remember your mother's hands for every chin that she held high for you in those moments. She said, look up, son, you all right. Hey, baby girl, don't you let that get you down. Mothers are powerful. We are really the hands and the feet of God. And we wanna sit in this space of honor and give God the glory for trusting us with his heritage, as it says in Psalms. So today I want you to love on your mother. I need for you to FaceTime her, blow her up, DM her if she's on Facebook, if she's in another country, text her, 
because these mamas is catching planes, you hear me? And for some of you moms who have moms who like to go to the mailbox, surprise her with a snail mail card. Do what you can do. Do what you can do while you can. And you young mothers, stop complaining about having kids. Your kids are not props for Instagram. Because when we swipe past it, we want to know, did that kid eat today? Is that baby eating? Our kids are more than just props. They are the pathway of righteousness. And God wants to redeem a whole nation. And he does it through kids. When he first starts out with the commandment, he says, teach these to your children. So Mother's Day is not just Mother's Day. It's an acknowledgement of me day. I'm here because of my mom. That's amazing. But I want you to be encouraged to love on your mothers, to be grateful that you have kids as God has trusted you. And he will give you grace and strength and wins and bonuses. He does. When your heart is set right over your kids, you will never believe how Christmas shows up every day throughout the year because of your heart for them. Because you understand how precious they are to the Lord. And then God partners with you to make sure you have all you need. So I want to say thank you for sharing your Mother's Day with us here at Believe LA. I love you guys. I appreciate you. I pray a blessing over you right now. Yes, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You guys stand up. Let's just stand up and give God some glory today for our mothers. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray over you, and Pastor Aaron's going to come and close out this service. But I just want to take a minute and seal this in the spirit. Yes, God, thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all the mothers today, all the families that honor their mothers, the sisters, the bonus moms, the big, the cousins who have raised kids that we don't know, all the ways that women have stepped in to help raise children. We see you today. God, we thank you right now that this word will go deep and let it show up in places that they never thought that it could. God, I thank you right now for giving these mothers and sons and daughters the opportunity to honor your daughters who have been trusted with your most precious gift. And we thank you. We seal it in Jesus' name. Amen.